sewing machine presser feet, what are they all and how do you use them? Welcome to The Sewing Report, I'm Jen. This channel is all about sewing crafts and DIY projects, and we're continuing the Learn to Sew in 2020 series. And in this episode, we're gonna be breaking down sewing machine presser feet. When you buy a sewing machine, it typically comes with an assortment of feet, but when you're new to sewing, you don't really know what they're for. It can be a little bit confusing, and you're like, why does this come with so many? Can't I just use the standard foot? But different feet have different purposes, so that's what we're going over. I'm going to be talking to you about each foot that comes with the Brother CS7000i machine that we're using in this series. I'm going to be demonstrating each one and sharing some specific settings that worked for me because it did take a little bit of trial and error. So let's get started. The Brother CS7000i comes with 10 different feet. Most of them snap onto the holder by placing the foot under the pin of the shank. Unless I specify otherwise, upper thread tension is set just under four. Much of the information I'm giving here can also be found in the operation manual. This model has 70 built-in stitches from basic, overcasting, decorative, and automatic one-step buttonhole. When you select a stitch, the machine's LCD screen will pop up the recommended foot. The default foot is J, a zigzag, also known as the all-purpose foot. The black button on the side levels the foot while sewing bulkier fabric. Part of the toe is clear so you can easily see what you're doing. We'll begin with basic stitch number one, center straight. Now to zigzag stitch number four. Notice this foot has a wide needle opening to accommodate side to side stitching. Let's also try stitch number 20, the triple zigzag. I made sample swatches labeled with the foot to reference later on. G is the overcasting foot, a great alternative to finishing raw seam edges if you don't have a serger. I tested out stitch number seven. The metal guide bar in the center helps line up the fabric edge for more consistent results. While not quite the same as finishing with a serger, the overcasting foot is a workable alternative. Many of the decorative stitches call for monogramming foot N, but note that the Brother CS7000i does not actually have alphabet stitching. That's just the name of the foot. This foot has a large, clear, open portion of the toe and a wide needle opening. I was excited to test out the decorative stitches, starting with number 47, which resembles branches or greenery. Number 49 is kind of a scalloped leaf. And then stitch number 51, leaves on a stalk. So pretty, and I can see myself using these for more heirloom sewing projects. Next up is R, the blind hem foot. You can use one of the blind hem stitches to neatly hem the edge of a garment, like pants, sleeves, or skirts. Testing with stitch number nine. Note that the stitch length is 2.0 and the stitch width is negative one. To use, press your desired hem in place. Then fold back the fabric like this with the wrong side facing up. The overhang of the fabric is about a half inch. Position the fabric with the edge of the fold against the center guide. The blind hem stitches a few straight stitches, then a zigzag that should take a tiny bite out of the folded fabric. If the zigzag isn't catching the fabric, increase the stitch width in the negative direction. Try negative two, then negative three. I've tried blind hem feet before, but have never gotten such great and consistent results like this. The quarter inch piecing foot is very simple to use for quilters. There are engraved seam markings along the toe at a quarter and an eighth of an inch. We're going back to number one, the center straight stitch. Note that the fabric is lined up with the front portion of the toe, not the back outer portion for that quarter inch seam allowance. Seems to work as advertised. No need to be scared of inserting zippers with the foot just for this. Foot eye is narrow, allowing you to sew closer to the teeth. 
It can be attached on either the left or the right side, depending on the orientation of your project. Stitch number one is again recommended. Here's one way I sew zippers for projects like zipper pouches. The zipper is right side up and the fabric is right side down. Sew close to the zipper teeth. Then fold back the fabric so the right side is up and the raw edge is underneath. Top stitch using a slightly longer stitch length like 3.0. You should get something like this at the end. The buttonhole foot A is pretty self-explanatory in name. If you have the Brother CS7000i, there are seven different one-step buttonhole stitches, plus a bar tack stitch to use with this foot. To make things easier, there's a button guide plate that determines the length of the buttonhole, so no guessing here. The foot snaps into place like the others, but there's a gray lever on the side that you need to pull down. Be sure it's behind the bracket on the foot. For the test, stitch number 30 with stitch length 0.2 and stitch width 4.0. Sewing tip, keep the upper and bobbin threads in front of the needle so it doesn't get caught up in the stitching. I was pleasantly surprised at the stitch quality with this sewing machine. The last thing to do is open up the buttonhole with a seam ripper. Be careful not to rip through the stitches. The other part of the equation is sewing on the buttons themselves with foot M, the button fitting foot. It stands out from the rest because it's very small and clear. The blue section should face front when snapping it in. Because you don't want the button to move, you'll need to lower the feed dogs with the back button. For the test, quilting zigzag stitch number 40 with stitch length 0.0. .0. You will need to turn the hand wheel to determine how wide the stitch should be, depending on the distance between the holes. For mine, it was perfect at 6.0. Sew enough stitches to where you feel the button is secure enough, then reverse back stitch to sew reinforcement stitches. I chose to sew my button with crisscross stitching. Having sewn buttons both by hand and machine either works, although I slightly prefer hand sewing because I can better control how much space is between the button and fabric. Of course, I have to show the button and buttonhole in action. Fits perfectly. If you've known me for a while, then you know this is my personal favorite, the walking foot. Great for sewing and quilting multiple layers and tricky fabrics like knits. It comes with a metal quilting guide to sew equally spaced parallel lines. To install this foot, you will remove the presser foot holder. Hook the connecting fork onto the needle clamp screw and the other fork to the presser foot screw. Tighten the presser foot holder screw securely. According to the manual, only use this foot to do straight or zigzag stitches, not decorative. For the test, I'm using number 37, a piecing straight stitch with a seam allowance of 6.5 millimeters from the right edge of the presser foot. My sample is a quilt sandwich, batting in between two layers of fabric. The foot isn't designed to use in reverse because the top feed dogs will move fabric forward while the bottom feed dogs will move it backwards. After sewing a few rows, I put the quilting guide on to demonstrate for quilting. I tend to use a stitch length of 3.5 because I think it makes the stitching look more prominent. On to the grand finale, attempting free motion quilting with the quilting foot. I made a modification thanks to Leah Day's suggestion. I've linked her video above. To install, align the white bracket on the presser foot screw, then tighten that screw. You'll need to lower the feed dogs with the back button. Slide out the flatbed attachment and insert the extension table. It clicks into place. Back to stitch number one, but with the smallest stitch length possible, 0.2. Took a lot of trial and error to get the tension right, but anything between six and seven worked for me. A tip to avoid bobbin thread tangling. Lower the presser foot, Turn the hand wheel toward you once around. Lift the presser foot and pull the upper thread, which will bring up the bobbin thread. 
hold both in your hand. Lower the needle in the same spot. Lock stitch a couple times, then let loose and go wherever the needle takes you. The foot has a built-in spring that moves up and down with the needle. As is, the foot doesn't give enough clearance to a quilt sandwich to easily move around under it, so the rubber band fixed that. Thank you, Leah, for saving me a headache. Every once in a while, I'd turn the quilting over to check tension on the underside. The Brother CS7000i was quite enjoyable to free motion quilt on, if only it had an 18 inch throat space, right? Brother, are you watching? You can see in my sample where I experimented with the tension. So I have a confession, before I shot this video, I hadn't even used all of the sewing machine presser feet that came with the machine. So this was actually a really good exercise for me to get experience with all of them. So I'm about as much of a beginner with all of the feet as you are if you haven't used all of them. So don't feel like bad or embarrassed or ashamed that you haven't used them all. You might still not use them all, but I wanted to make this video to make this process a little more approachable if you are new to sewing because it's okay, we were all new at some point. Going into this, I thought the process was going to be more daunting than it actually was. Once I looked at the operations manual and just kind of looked up the guide for each foot, it really was pretty simple and more straightforward than I was assuming. I didn't really have any issues with using the feet. Now again, as I mentioned earlier, with the quilting foot, the one that I used for free motion quilting, I did make an adjustment to the foot based on Leah Day's recommendation, and I was really glad I did because when I put the foot on the machine, it just seemed like the fabric was not going to move around very much under the foot. So I'm glad I did that because it worked out really well. Other than that one small issue, the feet have performed really well on the Brother CS7000i. And for this being a budget slash entry level machine, I've been pretty impressed so far. Compared to the Eversone Sparrow 25, the Brother actually stitches out, I think, better buttonholes. So if you are making garments with this machine, I think you will like all of the features and be pleased with the results. And I was pretty blown away by how easy free motion quilting was on it. Now again, I know it doesn't have the biggest throat space, but if you just wanna dabble in free motion quilting, I was actually really impressed with the Brothers performance. When I bought this machine, I really didn't have very many expectations. I went for it because it was the newer version of the Brother CS6000i. It had a few more bells and whistles, and the 6000i had a lot of raving reviews on Amazon, so I thought I would give it a shot. I'm really glad I did because so far I'm really loving sewing on the Brother CS7000i. So if you're looking for a good new sewing machine and you're kind of just getting into sewing, Going. Right now, I would really recommend this particular model. It's reasonably priced, it has a lot of features, it comes with a lot of really great feet for me as someone who does some garment sewing, quite a bit of quilting, some home deck stuff, general sewing. I really feel like this is going to fit the needs of a lot of different sewing consumers. So brother, hats off to you on this model. And if you're watching this video, but you wanna know more about the general functions of a sewing machine or just how to use a sewing machine in general, I would encourage you to check out another video in the Learn to Sew in 2020 series where I go over how to use the brother CS7000i and be sure to subscribe to the sewing report if you want to follow along. I really want this series to be helpful for someone who is just getting started. I'm Jennifer with the sewing report. I'll see you guys again in the next video.